No way. Hang on. Sorry. Hang on, guys. Just bear with me. Cover ears. Baby's ears. Hang on. What? Oh, you turned it. Okay, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Wait. Wait. Golly. Ah. Uh. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Let's do this. I'm really sorry, guys. It worked in practice. It a room full of people to verify. I'll tell you what. Yeah, let's just do that. That needs to pop on the box, and um, I will play as loud as I can, and we'll, uh, it'll be a party anyway. Uh, let's pull the bass volume all the way back so that it's the so that it's there, but just uh, you know, um, we'll get through it, guys. Y'all go hug somebody. Tell me you love them as we start to worship this morning. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry oh all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. And if you've been forgiven, and if you've been redeemed, Sing the song forever to the Lamb. And if you walk in freedom, and if you bear his name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. We'll sing the song forever and amen, and the angels cry. Oh, holy, while creation cries. Oh, holy, you are lifted high. Oh, holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing. Oh, holy. To the King of Kings, holy, you will always be, holy, holy forever. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all all thrones 
and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing, holy, to the King of kings, holy, you will always be, holy, holy forever, and the angels cry. creation cry oh only you are lifted high oh only holy forever blessed assurance Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. And what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. So I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, perfect submission, all is at rest, I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps, so this is my story. And this is my song, I'm praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God. 
my savior the one who will never fail he will never fail i trust in god my savior the one who will never never fail I trust in God grab a seat this morning friends we just sang about it didn't we that we trust in God as a part of our prayer time this morning let's uh, exhibit how we have trusted in God how we have lived our lives through that this morning. So as a part of our praise, a part of our uh, lifting up our joys, how have you seen God working in your life this week? Your joys. How have you seen it? How have you seen God working in your life? How have you seen it, Veliska? Friday was Caroline's birthday. Is this this coming Friday? All right. Caroline will turn seven. How old will you be, Caroline? Six. She will be six. I was trying to make you older than you really were. All right. Any other birthdays or anniversaries that, that we can celebrate? Because in five seconds, I'm getting ready to ask Josh to lead us in a song. I'm giving him a five-second heads up. Any other birthdays? Yeah, tell me. Anniversary. How many years, Tommy? Forty-six years, Teresa. That's awesome. So 46 years you have put up with Tommy. <laughs> So we'll be praying for both of y'all. Crowns and jewels and everything else. Congratulations, Tommy and Teresa. That's awesome. Any other birthdays or anniversaries that we can celebrate? Any other birthdays before we sing? All right, Josh, lead us in a song, please. Can't hear the guitar anyway, so we're just going to vocal it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you happy birthday everybody happy birthday to you was it just one person she was so she was so embarrassed usually she's up here leading the song but no not today not today how else have we seen god working in our life this week in our praises robin Good. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And Max is on the go this morning, man. His little feet are carrying him everywhere. He's had donuts this morning, man. He's been sugared up. Bev. Yeah, Farm Bureau uh, gave uh, Nurse One Child a, a great grant. Uh, Shane uh, Williams was able to give us that check, and you all did a uh, clay shooting tournament, right? And, uh, and the proceeds were split between Nurse One Child and another food bank here in, uh, uh, was it Etowah Baptist Church? Uh, yep. So, uh, nurse one child. It's been a it's been a good month of uh, grant receiving for uh, that ministry, and we're grateful uh, for everything it does uh, for the ministry of of feeding homeless, uh, not homeless, but hungry kids here in our community. So. Ellen.
Yeah. Juneteenth uh, was celebrated yesterday at Cook Park. And um, yeah, the AME uh, church here, Zion Church here in town, sponsored that. So uh, a great celebration of that. Today is Bicentennial Sunday, whoop, whoop, celebrating 200 years of Keith Church. And uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, we've got the Shelton family here with us. Uh, Will will be preaching uh, for us a little later. He's wearing his orange and white checkerboard. There seems to be a theme here today. Uh, I think most of all, it's good luck. It's a good luck charm. Uh, trying to bring a little good luck into the afternoon uh, 2 o'clock game. Isn't that right, Zabo? Trying to get a little luck into the, to the afternoon. But uh, Will comes from um, Knoxville, grown up, uh, growing up there and attended Asbury Seminary, uh, served some rural churches in Virginia, and then came to Keith where uh, he was an associate here under Three different pastors, you said? When you said that, I was like, gosh, uh, I, I didn't know there were three different things. You, you ran through three, three senior pastors that you couldn't keep a pastor when you were here. <laughs> but uh, Will uh, was an associate here uh, under three separate pastors and then uh, went to Pulaski, Virginia, where uh, I handed the reins over to Will. Uh, as he moved to Pulaski, and uh, he'll share about his time there, and then is uh, now uh, the senior pastor at uh, Powell Church in uh, Northeast Knoxville, and uh, doing a fabulous job there. Uh, Will and Alex have been friends for a number of years, so it's it's been great to uh, catch up with them this morning, and uh, we're just excited that you're here with us this morning. Uh, are there concerns that we can mention this morning as uh, we pray together? Karen. Yeah. Lil one, uh, you could hear it in her voice yesterday, was a little disappointed when she said that her hip surgery went well, but she's having more pain with the second one than she did with the first one. She said that's not unexpected, according to the doctor. But she said they didn't tell her that in advance. <laughs> they, said, they said, now you tell me. <laughs> but uh, we definitely will be praying for Lil when getting uh, her uh, hip surgery. She said she was home by 2 o'clock instead of 5 o'clock on, on Friday. But she was uh, in in considerable amount of pain this weekend. Definitely be praying. Okay, so a co-worker uh, that lost um, their father in a car accident. Oh. Yeah, Lisa Mayfield said it earlier today. Uh, it's definitely dry and it's hot. It's hot in here. I don't know. If we've, we've got the air turned down, but it's so hot outside. Our, our systems are, are having trouble keeping up. So uh, pray for rain. Uh, our farmers are, are making it making it hard. And somebody uh, said it in the first service. Pray for uh, people who um, are homeless right now out in the heat. It, it makes it hard for them. Uh, people who are without home. So um, remember Carol and Chuck Poe. Uh, they did. They're still uh, trying to get information on uh, on Carol's uh, condition. Um, I think the latest was that uh, they're still uh, trying to find the right treatment uh, for her pancreatic cancer. So uh, continue to pray for them. Other concerns?
Okay, Amber Smith is expecting a baby girl in September. Uh, we're excited about that, but some issues uh, with the baby uh, has uh, cropped up, so uh, we'll be praying for a healthy baby, healthy mom. Other concerns we can lift up? Now, Summit, we are not going to cry this morning. I just like saying that name, Paige. This is our first time in worship today, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. All right, if there's nothing else this morning, let's go to God in prayer. Oh God, you are the one who loves us. You are the one that is working in our lives, and you are the one who continues to meet us where we are who comes to us every day in ways that are expected and unexpected. God, you come to us in, in ways of, of drawing us closer to yourself in love and in care. And God, you come to us in, in ways that are drawing us into deeper faith. And as we have prayed this morning for people who have issues of concern, have issues of healing and in grief. God, we pray for those who are just in need of your touch, of your healing. We pray for them and, and ask that you would just be present in surrounding them. God, we pray that uh, the concerns that we have kept to ourselves and we have kept silent, that you would be with us as we have kept those close to ourselves. And God, we give you thanks for the way that we have seen you active and working in our life, as we have seen you working and doing an amazing work in the life of our church. And I pray that we would keep our eyes open to the ways that you are, are using us as individuals to bring transformation, to bring good news and hope to a hurting world. God, continue to use us as your people in this world. God, your love and your grace. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your restored life, your new life. We ask for your help as we go throughout these days. And all of God's people said, Amen. And all of God's people said, Now, no, say that sounded good. <laughs> the first one didn't sound very good. Uh, friends, we continue to worship uh, as we ask you to bring your time and your offerings of prayer to the altar. Please uh, consider this a time of prayer.
For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the sky, and for the love which from our birth, over and around us lies. The Lord of all, to Thee we reign. This our hymn of grateful praise. For the beauty of each hour, of the day and of the night. Hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. And Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of ear and eye, for the heart and mind's delight, for the mystic harmony, linking sense to sound and sight. And Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For Thyself best gift divine, to the world so freely given. For that great, great love of thine, peace on earth and joy in heaven. And Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. And Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. All right, we invite our children to meet Miss Beth and Miss Austin back at the back door for our children's time. And without any further ado, we invite Pastor Will. Covington, who is currently back on the sound booth. What up, yo? Our, our, there he is, our almost, uh, 
That's good. That's healthy. Our almost seven, seven-year-old son was baptized by Dave Graybill right about here. Uh, Sophia, who's four, this is the first time uh, some of you guys have laid eyes on her. So um, just know, man, uh, there's, there's, there's no ground on this earth that is holier to me than right um, and there's a lot of my personal, most important things about my life that are tied into that. But I also, um, I have this, this very vivid memory of when they asked me to come here, I had been in the middle of nowhere for six years. And uh, I knew Alex. We weren't dating it, but we were friends. We knew each other. But I didn't really know a whole lot about this place. I didn't know a lot about Athens. I came and interviewed with Denny Humphreys, who was one of, one of the three senior pastors that I had the privilege of working with. Uh, when Denny's here ne next month, Denny is here. You tell Denny what a failure at retirement he is when you see him. I told him that the other day. Uh, he's he's aggressively non-retired these days. Um, but he interviewed me, and then he showed me this room here, and they said, well, we're really trying to grow our contemporary worship service. And I saw this room, and I, again, I didn't know Athens at all. I, I saw how close it was to the college. Uh, so the college, I think at the time, uh, and not the university, saw how close it was to all those things, and I thought, this church, this place has all the ingredients to make it work. And then my next thought was, it must not be working because the band must be terrible. And I remember so vividly the very first, I knew Alex, but I didn't know any of the rest of these folks. Josh had really long hair. Remember Josh, y'all long, long timers? Yes, Right? Uh, Matt was here playing drums, uh, and, and there were, uh, uh, I, Drew Crabtree and I were texting about something er earlier this week, like he was on bass and all this stuff, but I had this vivid memory of the first Sunday I was here, the first verse of the first song, standing right there and being like, oh, the band isn't terrible, and like, oh, this is amazing, and I am so deeply grateful to be part of the story that is told in this place. Um, I, I, am, I said in the early service, uh, it's a pleasure to be in Melissa's atmosphere. This is the second time Melissa and I have served the same church, the second time we've both lived in the same parsonage. And so uh, when we moved from Pulaski to Powell, we found some of Melissa's, old, uh, Melissa's cat's old medicine from like 2017. And I'm sure she's found all kinds of stuff from when we lived in the parsonage here uh, in 2012 and 13. 14, um, we, we Methodists, we are at our best when we um, can tell a good story collectively. Some of the very best things that worked for us in Pulaski worked because Melissa paved the runway. And uh, just deeply, deeply grateful to be in her atmosphere any time. I said in the early service, too, um, the staff, we, I, I have a fantastic staff at Powell Church, and one of the reasons I know they are so fantastic is because I have the incredibly high bar that was set here. Um, the brilliance of the group of people that were together working here when I was here is just stupid uh, and unfair to other churches. The number of really smart and talented people that were here at the same time. Uh, and so I just, uh, it's, again, I'll just stand up here and do this all morning. We gotta talk about Jesus in a second. But like, to think of like, like Josh helped us finance our house. You know, uh, Harrison Hart and I texted just a few days ago about the Celtics uh, winning the world championship well after midnight. Uh, Brandy Armstrong, who designed the cover of my book, um, Tracy Hicks, Cindy Mishtal, the, the first people to love our kids, Doug Manley. Um, it was great this morning to, I, I totally forgot about the choir, so I walked into the sanctuary and then turned around and saw Abby and all this choir was there and was like, oh yeah, these people too. And so uh, just, just a delight. I want to tell a story uh, to help us get into the text this morning that uh, is something that happened to me while I was here that I never told before, in part for reasons that will become clear to you in just a moment. Uh, but I think the statute of limitations is up on this story, so uh, let's give this a try. The last couple of years that we were here, we lived in a at Linux place, a townhouse, and I used to get up in the morning and run. And uh, one morning I was running over by, now there's a whole school there, right, that wasn't there before. Um, but I was running down by Athens City Middle School, and you live here, you know, like there's no, there's big open space that you can see for miles, all that space. You can't hide anywhere in that space. So I'm running, and I come to 
what is drop-off time at the middle school. And right there, there is, or there was, a uh, stop sign, a crosswalk, and a school zone. It was the triple threat of safety, right? And in the crosswalk, pedestrians have the right-of-way, or at least they're supposed to have the right-of-way. I often say that uh, pedestrians have the right-of-way is something they say about you after you've died at a trial somewhere, right? Like, your honor, he had the right-of-way. Uh, so I'm running. You know, if you run or walk, you walk your dog or, or uh, anything like that, like, um, you like to make eye contact with the driver. So you know that they know, and they know that you know that you're there, and all that good stuff. So I'm coming up on the, they're dropping kids off and coming down the hill, and I'm coming up on that intersection, two cars. The first car sees me, and they're like, I got this. They go, that's cool. So I come there, and the second car pulls up and stops, and they make a complete stop. They come to a complete stop. And I think we make eye contact. She had on sunglasses. I still don't know who this person is. Uh, if you know who this is in this story, please let me know after the service is over. Uh, we make eye contact, and I am still, I don't stop, I'm still kind of in my stride, but I think to myself, well, I mean, it's a stop sign, it's a crosswalk, it's a school zone, I have the right of way, like, okay, so I, I go, and I enter in my stride into the crosswalk. And it wasn't like I got one step into the crosswalk, friends, like, I'm halfway through this thing. And roundabout when I'm on, like, the where the emblem of her car is, she just goes. So it's a little disingenuous to say I got hit by a car. I got, I got like bounced. So like she, in my head, it looked really cool. She, she hit me and I got both hands on the hood and kind of went like this. And uh, you know, that happened, I, I didn't fall down. Again, it looked cool in my head. I came down and I turned and looked at her and she looked mortified. And then I uh, said some words really loud. Uh, I've told this story everywhere else but here because I really enjoy telling it. Uh, when I tell this story, I like to say two of the words that I said are in the Bible, but one wasn't, um, no matter which translation you use. Uh, and, and while I have, uh, it was not the first time I have used that word, the three words I put together, it's the first time in my life I've ever put those three words together before or since. I have no idea that that's what came out, why that's what came out of my mouth when I got hit by a car, but that's what happened in the middle school drop-off line. So, like, she, I didn't know what to do. I was like, do I keep running? She pulls out. Uh, behind, I haven't seen him today. Behind her was Shane Pledge, um, who at the time was serving on the staff parish relations committee of this church, which... Those of you laugh because you know that's the committee that decides who gets to be the pastor and who doesn't. So Shane rolls down his window and goes, that was crazy. And I was like, dude, I know. And then right behind Shane was a cop who pulled the woman over. I was like, do I, do I go over there? What do, I, what do I do? So I decided to just keep running. So I ran really fast, like at an incredible pace. I had so much adrenaline. And I came back to, uh, came back to the townhouse Took a shower. You ever do the thing where you take a shower and it doesn't take any of the sweat off of you? Like I did that. I did. I came in. I I came in to the to the office. I, Brandy might have been there. Dave Graybill was definitely there. And I was like, I have something to tell you. I said, if you hear, I think the associate pastor at Keith Church yelled the worst word you could say in the middle school drop off line at ACMS. I'm I'm just here to let you know that all of that information was. Uh, in this case. So uh, I, uh, again, if you know who that was, I feel like six years is enough time to know who that was, uh, all of that good stuff. There's this truth that like when you um, bump up against something much bigger than you, much stronger than you, much, 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 much more than you, it can be a bit unpredictable. You don't know what's going to come out of your mouth. You don't know what you're going to do. There's this truth for us as human beings that when we bump up against a power, that we can act in unpredictable kind of ways. I want to show you that in the text all in one chapter this morning. This is Luke 9. This is kind of a pivot point in the gospel of Luke. Luke 9 starts this way. This is Luke 9 in verse 1. Jesus called the 12 together, and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Jesus sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, take nothing for your journey. Don't take a staff, 
or a bag or bread or money. Don't even take an extra tunic, extra clothes. Whatever house you enter, stay there. Leave from there. And wherever they don't welcome you, as you're leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. Let me get my phone out here so I can make sure we're not here for seven hours, because I'm so daggum happy to be here. I'll just stand up here and keep going, so let's make sure we're all okay. So there's this point in the story where we don't often think about this necessarily, but like Jesus sends them out. He's not with them, but he sends them out to go and do these things, and they do it. And it works. Like, wouldn't there have been a moment for these guys? When he's not just sending them to tell the good news. He's sending them to cast out demons and cure the sick, and it works. Wouldn't these guys have had moments where they had to look at each other and be like, whoa, that works. This works. And then he calls them all back together, and surely they would have had all these moments of like, dude, I went to Caesarea Philippi, and like, this happened. And they would have said, well, what? Like, listen to this. Like, this, it, this is real. It works. And then in Luke 9, from there, the story goes on into these incredibly powerful, much more memorable, high point Jesus stories. So he sends them out to do all the things. They do it. It works. And they come back. And what immediately follows is the feeding of the 5,000, where they see Jesus, in terms of scale, do the largest miracle that he will do. Right after that, all of this in Luke 9, then from the, for the first time, Jesus begins to say, who do you say that I am? And they begin to put language to, like, you're, you're the one. You're the Messiah. He affirms it. He begins to tell them that to be Messiah really means to, to, to suffer, die. Take up your cross. And then he takes Peter, James, and John, his inner circle, up a mountain where he's transfigured before them, clothes whiter than snow, and they hear the voice of God speak. Now, what I want to believe is that if I was there and went and did these things, and like it, it worked. And then I saw, not just saw, but tasted the feeding of the 5,000. And then I heard him, when I put words to, you're the Messiah, and he affirmed it. And then for Peter, James, and John, they see it and they hear God. What I want to tell myself is that if I was there, and I was in that close proximity to all of that stuff, not only would my faith be so much stronger, I would just simply do less dumb stuff, right? That if I was in such proximity to Jesus, if I was so close to that power, just by virtue of being close to it, seeing it, being part of it, getting to put my, that like automatically, that would make me, um, you know, that would make me say better words when I get hit by a car, right? But there's this stubbornly human thing that happens happens not just in the Gospels, but it happens throughout the Bible, which is proximity to power is uh, no guarantee that we will know or understand how to use power well ourselves. Because all of that happens in Luke 9. They, they go and they do it themselves, and it works, and then the feeding of the 5,000, and then you're the Messiah, and then the transfiguration and all of that, and one of the first things that happens In verse 46 is this, an argument arose among them as to which one of them was the greatest. Jesus, aware of their inner thoughts, which is a terrifying verse, right? Jesus, aware of their inner thoughts, took a little child and put it by his side and said, whoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. It is the least among all of you who is They go and do, and it works. And then they see big miracle, bigger miracle, biggest miracle, all of that stuff. Then they hear Jesus affirm that he's the one, 
And then after that, they, three of them see Jesus transfigured and hear the voice of God. And their response is, well, this is pretty great. And for me to be this close to it must mean in some way that I'm pretty great too. And hey, while we're talking about how great I am, let's figure out which one of us is the greatest. Let's figure out if the conversation is about greatness, let's figure out how much greater I am than you, how much greater you are than me. <clears throat> I really enjoy treatments of this in other, <clears throat> in other Gospels. I also enjoy water as well. It's good. <clears throat> I enjoy treatments of this in other Gospels where James and John want to ask Jesus this question, but they're afraid, so they get their mom to do it, you know, who surely believes that their, her boys are, in fact, the greatest, just like you believe that about your own children and we believe it about ours and all that good stuff. Proximity to power is no guarantee that we will understand, utilize, know what to do with it well. And if you're not convinced by that, here's the very next story in verse 51. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. The, the, the pivot here in the Gospel of Luke, like now we're really on the way to the cross. Jesus sent messengers ahead of him, and on their way they entered a village of Samaritans to make ready for him. The Samaritans didn't receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. So when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume him? Did the thing themselves saw the miracles, heard he's the one, heard the voice of God. Their response is, how great are we, and can we burn to the ground these people who disagree with us? And by the way, not, Lord, will you burn them to the ground? It's, let us do it, right? We cured some diseases and healed the sick. Now we're ready for fire. Now we're ready to burn it to the ground if they disagree with us or if they are against us. The good news, uh, and the bad news, and the good news, is that these boys are stubbornly human. And that's comforting, because I've got some stubborn humanity. And I bet you do too. And their proximity to Jesus, and their proximity to power, and their, like, let me put my hands in this miracle, and all of that stuff is no guarantee that they're going to know exactly what to do with that power. It's no guarantee that they're going to avoid the temptation to ask themselves questions about who is the greatest. Clearly no guarantee that they're not going to still want to do maybe the most human thing we do, which is, Lord, get them for that thing they did that I think is wrong, and don't just get them, but let me help. Judge them and let me help. Get even with them and let me And that's why I I think the idea here that Jesus speaks to is not just that the least will be greatest, but in fact, entirely appropriately so, that it's kids who will be greatest. That for Jesus, the question is not uh, who's most right, who's most true, who's most great, who's the closest to power, all of that stuff. The question consistently, is how can we be more power? I want to tell you that some of my favorite things that happened here that God did while I was here were some of the most childlike things. You know why we do birthdays? Do you know why we do birthdays and anniversaries in this room? Do you remember this? Maybe the first or second week I was here, we were doing the morning prayer requests and announcements and uh, toss. Michael Hicks over here playing electric guitar. He's leaned back against the wall, and we said, does anybody have any celebrations? And he said, it's my half birthday. And I thought, that's weird. But I didn't say that out loud because I didn't know him or any of you for you know a little bit. And so I said, does anybody else have a birthday? And uh, however many years later, here we are, right? Here's what I believe about you whoever you are and whatever you believe and all that stuff this morning. I I believe about people who show up in a room like this on a Sunday morning, show up in a United Methodist Church like this on a Sunday morning. I believe we're looking for Jesus. 
That's what I believe about you. I also believe that in looking for him and in trying to be close to him or whatever, we're all, me included, me most, we're all going to fall into the temptation of wanting to make it about our own greatness or about who's closer than someone else or about all of those things. And I know we do it because those boys did it too. That Jesus constantly had to remind them, no, you can't burn them with fire. But more than that, that it's not about who's the greatest or the rightest or the truest or the closest or any of that stuff. It's about how can we be the most childlike? I am deeply grateful for the ways Heath Church helped me to grow. And I got a long way to go. When I first came here and interviewed for this job with the Staff Parish Relations Committee, I was 30 years old. And someone on the committee said, we thought we were getting a young pastor, which hurt my feelings. I'm 42 now, but I am grateful as, again, you ask Denny when you see him next time, for the ways in which when you do it right, when you do it right, this thing will keep you young. And not like teenage and cool, it'll, it'll keep you this. It'll keep you curious, it'll keep you joyful. It'll keep you loud in the best ways. It'll make you fun. It'll make you question things because you don't know stuff. But I believe it'll also make you And I have great hope where there is childlike faith that that's what true proximity is. Appreciate Josh, who we haven't worked together in how many years. He knows I'm coming to this one. He's down and ready to go. I love you, man. I just will you will you will you pray with me this morning? God, this is holy ground. But help us, help me, God, to remember that you have given us your very spirit, your full presence living in us, and that means that in some way the ground is always holy. Because you're with us everywhere we go. Help us in our going. Help us in our seeking. And God, we seek. We want to be right. We want to be faithful. We want to be true. We want to be smart. We want to be wise. All we, we want to be all these things. Help us. Help me, good grief, not to forget childlike. Not to try to tack it on at the end. It doesn't look good there. Need to worry less about who's the greatest. Find ourselves more believing that we've got a lot left to learn. But as our very youngest friends can teach us, that even in that season and spirit of learning, we can be kids who believe the childlike faith that we need. So God, may we find it, may I find it, brewing in our spirit this day. We lift ourselves to the hope of the one who is indeed Savior and Lord, to the hope of our God, still working on us too, making us new every day. We lift ourselves to that image and that hope this day. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, You tell him or do I tell him? What's up? I, hey, I'll, how about I say this space is always open if you'd like to come and pray? You did say earlier that stand up and hug somebody as they come to love them. That's okay. Um, as you're able, we invite you to stand and to give your witness. You tell him. I did that backwards. That's your job. Yeah. Sure. Well, you're there. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad y'all are here and singing good with us this morning. I'm so sorry about my guitar. It'll be at the shop tomorrow to figure out what's going on. And uh, y'all sound great. And, uh, Will, Alex, it's always so good to have you guys. I'm, I'm so glad to see you. It's good to see you. Y'all clap for Will. Let him know. And just so you, I don't know if everybody knows, me and Alex have been friends for a long, 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 like high school. 
and they gave me, uh, us, the family, our arguably greatest uh, baby present when Georgia was born. They got us some of those uh, auto swaddles. The auto swaddles. You, you don't have to actually swaddle. You put the baby in it, and it just kind of does it. I don't know. Look it up. Google it. It's awesome. It's a great, great thing. So thank God for you guys. I'm glad y'all are here today. It's good to see you. Let's sing. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Your way is the only way for me. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I want to be on it. It's a narrow road, but the mercy's wide, because you're good on your promise. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, you'll complete it. I'll take you at your word. You spoke, and the chaos fell in line. And I know, because I've seen it in my life. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I want to be on it. It's a narrow road, the tide is high, but you parted the waters. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, you'll complete it. I'll take you at your word. You said your love will never give up. You said your grace is always enough. You said your heart would never forget or forsake me. You said I'm saved, you call me yours. You said my future's full of your hope. You've never failed, so I know that you'll never fail me. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, you'll complete it. I'll take you at your word. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, you'll complete it. I'll take you at your word. Friends, what an amazing, uh, what an amazing day of worship! Thank you so much for being here. Let me give you a couple of reminders. What time are we worshiping next week? Ten a.m. in the sanctuary. It's a fifth Sunday, so we are in the sanctuary combined worship. And friends, it is going to be amazing. It's going to be interactive. There's going to be things that we're going to be doing that we don't do in the sanctuary usually. There's going to be a ladder involved, so that's all I'm going to say. So uh, it's going to be things we normally don't do, so I'm just going to give you a few teasers. So be there at 10 o'clock next Sunday. If you're here at 11, you will have missed it. You will have missed the ladder jump. So uh, be there at 10 o'clock in the sanctuary next Sunday. Josh will be there, and uh, it's going to be a, a, an awesome event next Sunday at 10 o'clock in the sanctuary. Next Sunday night at 6 o'clock in this space, we will have our church meeting talking about uh, bringing Jason Gaddis back to tell us uh, the trustees report from Holston Conference. 
If you'll want to be here uh, in this space at 6 o'clock next Sunday night, a week from today. So uh, that's the two big things for this, uh, for next Sunday. 10 o'clock, where? In the sanctuary. 6 o'clock, where? Here, in the, san- in, uh, the gathering. Go this day in peace. Shelton's, thank you all for being here. Go in peace. Amen.